Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. Today, I'll be showing you how to swap the animations that are on your animator at runtime so you don't have to make a bunch of links inside of your animator with a bunch of parameters saying melee attack, magic attack, two-handed attack, when they're all basically an attack that probably have the exact same link going to and returning from the state. Instead of having to have all of those states and links to those states, we can just use an animation override controller to replace the animations in those states, so it'll play the animation that we want it to play, depending on the state of our game. So let's go ahead and set up a graphics folder, and inside of that folder, let's make a models folder, an animations folder, and an animation controller folder. Then I'll go ahead and create a folder for my character and bring him in and bring in all of my animations and set them up. But after doing that, let's set up our entity controller, which is our animation controller. And the only thing we'll have in it is an idle state and an attack state. Then we'll have a link that goes from the idle state to the attack state when the attack trigger gets activated. Now, we want to switch out the animation that's on the idle and the animation that's on the attack, depending on what our character is currently using. You can see at the current moment, it just has the idle animation for your fist and the attack animation for your fist. So, let's set up a way to swap those out without having to make a bunch of links and parameters. Let's make a scripts folder and a mono behaviors folder inside of there and a C sharp script called animator overrider. We'll then attach the animator overrider to our character and open it up inside of our IDE. We can go ahead and put it inside of a namespace so it doesn't interfere with any other code our project might be using. Then let's get rid of the start and update functions and make a private animator animator. And then inside of awake, we can set the animator equal to get component animator. After doing that, let's set up a function called setAnimations that we pass an animation override controller into, and we'll just say animator.runtimeAnimatorController is equal to the override controller that we pass into the header. Now let's set up the buttons on our canvas for picking which attack type we're currently using and for playing our attack. So we'll need three buttons, a button for our bare fist, a button for our melee attack, and a button for our magic attack. Then we'll have one more button for performing the actual attack. Now let's create another C# -sharp script called set attack type, attach it to our canvas that holds the buttons, and then we can go ahead and open that script up inside of our IDE. Let's get rid of the start and the update methods, put it inside of a namespace, and then let's create a serialized field private animator overrider controller, which will be an array called override controllers. Then let's make another method called public void set that's going to pass in an int value. Then let's make another serialized field which will be an animator overrider called overrider. Then we'll say overrider.setAnimations and we'll pass in our array of animator override controllers using the value that's passed into our method as the index lookup for our array. Now let's go back into Unity. Drag our character into the overrider variable slot that we just created on the set attack type script. After that, let's create a folder called overrides inside of our animations controller folder. And then inside of here, we can create a new animator overrider controller called melee override. And on the melee override, let's select the entity controller as the controller that we want to override. And after selecting that, you'll see that the animations that are on that controller will appear on top of this override controller in this position called original. Now, 
we just need to set the overrides of the animation that we want to play instead of the original animation. So, for attack fist melee override, we'll say attack melee. Then for the idle fist for the melee override, we'll say idle melee, which currently is called idle attack, so let's go ahead and fix that to say idle melee so our naming is consistent. Now let's do the same thing but for our magic animation, so we'll make a magic override controller. And for attack fist, we'll set attack magic. And for idle fist, we'll say idle magic. Now let's create another animator overrider called fist override. And we'll select the entity controller for the controller. And then we'll not select any overrides for this one because we just wanted to play the default animations that our character had before overriding anything. So once we have that set up, we can select our canvas and drag in our three override controllers. And then let's go to our buttons and add a new on click event, drag in our canvas, go to set attack type, and then set. And for the fist, we'll put in a value of zero. Do the same thing for melee and put in a value of one. Then on magic, do the same thing and put in a value of 2. Then on our attack button, we'll also make an on-click event, but instead let's drag in our tribal character, go to animator, set trigger, type in attack, and we're done. Let's click on play and see if it works. Our attack when we're using bare fist punch, when we click use melee, it performs a magic attack, and when we use use magic, it does a swinging attack, which is a melee attack, which obviously is wrong, so let's fix that. If we click on magic button, you'll see that it's playing 2, and melee button is playing 1, and if we go to our array, magic override is actually where melee should be, and vice versa. So let's switch that. Click play again and see if it's working as we expect it to be. Let's also go closer to our character so we can have a better view of the jump attack that we added in. So let's click attack with our fist and it punches. Clicking on melee and doing attack does the jumping attack animation. And then when we click use magic, it switches to the magic idol and does the magic attack. Excellent. Everything seems to be working just as we expected it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also join my Discord if you would like to discuss this video further or any of my other videos. Or if you just have any Unity 3D or C Sharp questions. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs up anyways. As always, have a wonderful day and stay coding.